Hello and welcome to The Mill. I'm your host, Dusty Crane, and today we are going to be looking at the solo mode for Pendulum. Pendulum introduces a dual automa that is meant to simulate two opponents. Now, because you're trying to run the automa and beat the automa at the same time, the management is simplified. They are both handled as one. They don't retrieve workers. They don't take actions. They never move their workers to the bottom reward space, and um, they only use the green and purple area, leaving that black area alone for you to, you know, take whatever actions you want, although technically that's the way it works in the regular version of the game anyway. Um, but uh, in the untimed phase is when they start to get treated as individuals, and that's when they're going to gain votes, they're going to gain victory points, and they're going to work to take options from the council reward mat that you may want unless you try and stop them. Finally, as a note, just due to the design of the Automa, you do have to use the timers. The untimed mode is not going to work for this, but it's pretty easy to do, so let's go ahead and take a look at it. Let's get started with the components. For the sake of using the right terminology throughout the video, let's look at the components. This is the Automa scoring mat. These are the three player aid cards. These are the three Automa scoring cards. They're double-sided. And this is the 32 card deck of Automa cards. Today we're going to set up for a three player game. Go ahead and choose colors for the two Automa and then do the following before you place your own workers. First, randomly determine the order on the privilege track as you normally would. I usually put the markers in my hand and shake them until one falls out and then the next, but feel free to randomize that however you choose. Then, place the Automa scoring mat on the table. Then. Place one achievement marker for each of the Automa here. Place one common worker of one of the Automa's colors on Automa 1 head, and then do the same for the Automa 2 head. This will help you remember which color is Automa 1 and which color is Automa 2. Next, choose a difficulty level and then place the corresponding scoring card on the scoring mat. You can find the difficulty levels on the back page of the Automa guide. A is the easiest and F is the hardest. It's worth noting that for levels D through F, it is mandatory that you use the advanced variant from page 21 of the rulebook. Shuffle all Automa cards and place them in a face-down stack. This is called the Automa deck. Leave room next to it for a discard pile. Give the Automa six Grande workers. The color doesn't matter. Then, place one of the Grande workers on each of the bottom row spaces in the purple area and then place one of the Grande workers on each of the bottom row spaces in the green area. Next, draw an Automa card. If it has a Grande worker icon on the purple box, place a Grande worker on the remaining single width space of the purple action area. If there's no worker there, place the Grande worker on the empty double wide space. Next, draw another Automa card. If it has a Grande worker in the green box, place a Grande worker on the remaining single width space of the green action area. If there's no worker there, place the Grande worker on the empty double wide space. And then reshuffle the Automa deck. And that is the setup. Let's take a look at the makeup of an Automa card. This left half is for real time play, and this right half is for the untimed council phase. Let's go ahead and start with the left hand side. This is the worker movement area. This indicates which timers to flip, if any. Or, you may gain a card with this iconography instead, which means to remove a province card. Finally, you may encounter a card with no action required during this real-time phase at all. Now, onto the right-hand side. During the council phase, this is where the Automa is going to gain stuff. This icon indicates votes, this one victory points, and this one here is what council reward cards is going to take. Let's talk about what two things trigger an Automa action. First. When you move one of your workers off the bottom reward box of any action space, since this takes place before you place your worker on another space, it's probably a good habit to put your worker back on your mat or just off of the reward box to keep track of where you're at in the process. By the way, if the stratagem card would remove the worker from the reward box, the automa is still triggered. The second thing that'll do it is when you flip the green or black timer and the purple timer has run out. Now, let's talk about what happens when the Automa is triggered. First, you'll draw the top card from the Automa deck, place it face up in the discard pile, and resolve it. I'll get to what that means in just a moment. However, if you would go to draw a card from the Automa deck and it's empty, quickly shuffle the discard pile to form a new deck and draw a card. The rulebook indicates that since it's real time, if you find the shuffling to be too time intensive or perhaps anxiety inducing, just flip the discard pile over and use that as the new deck. Alright, let's go ahead and talk about resolving Automa cards. 
There are four possible scenarios you can encounter when you resolve an automa card, but at the most you'll be doing two per card. You'll either be moving a worker, flipping a timer, removing a province card, or nothing at all. Let's take a look at each of those in more detail. First, move worker. If there's a worker on the current automa card, the automa will move one of its workers. If you see the worker in the purple area, you're going to be moving a worker in the purple area. Same deal with the green. If you see a worker in the green area, you're going to be moving a worker in the green area. In both cases, you'll move the leftmost worker on the row with the timer to a space without an automa worker. Ultimately, there are four different ways that can go, and the game comes with a handy card to illustrate the differences. The most important thing to notice is you're moving the worker from a row with a timer. Same as the normal game. Now let's talk about the Atoma flipping timers. You'll see one of two different images as it relates to timer flips, either this one with purple and green, or this one with purple and black. It's important to note that while there are indicators of both timers, the Atoma will flip only one timer per card per activation. So let's step through that process since there's a bit more to this than just flipping a timer. First, if the purple timer is run out, flip the purple timer. The knocked off timer marker goes to the Atoma scoring mat. If this was the second time the purple timer has been flipped, including the initial flip to start the round, then remove the legendary achievement token from the achievement card if it's still there. This doesn't give the Automa anything, but it does prevent you from getting the legendary achievement this round. If the purple timer hasn't run out, then flip the green or black timer as indicated by the card. If those timers happen to still be running, then do nothing. Remember, the Automa will only ever flip one timer per card. Finally, the determination for whether a timer has run out is made the moment you touch the Automa card. So if you were flipping the card over when the purple timer ran out, it's considered to be still running for the sake of determining which timer to flip. This applies to green and black timers too. So when you'd resolve a card, quickly glance at all timers to see what you're working with. A quick note on achievements. You may consider putting the achievement token next to the second flip of the timer on the purple board to remind you that after the second timer flip, you can no longer gain the legendary achievement. Furthermore, since you're simulating a three-player game, you can't earn the legendary achievement in the first round of the game either. As a reminder, the Automa doesn't gain the legendary achievement because it's always considered to already have it. If you want to win, you'd better snag that achievement at least once. The Untimed Council Phase If you've played Pendulum, you're accustomed to the Council Phase looking like this here. But the Solo Mode has a step zero, if you will, assigning victory points to the Automa, and it works like this. For each Automa, do the following. Draw three Automa cards and place them like so. You'll want them showing the Council Phase side of the card. Add up the Automa VP icons, add the round bonus shown on the scoring card of the current round, and then add one VP per time marker on the scoring mat. If the Automa score is in the negative, it had gained zero points. You do not move its score backwards on the track, the token had just stay put. And that concludes step zero victory points. On to step one, privilege and votes. This works very similar to figuring the victory points. For each Automa, add the votes listed on their three already revealed cards, then add one vote for each time marker on the scoring mat. If that results in a negative number, the Automa gets zero votes. If it results in a number larger than 20, the Automa gets 20 votes. On to step two, gain rewards. For each Automa, advance zero, one, or two spaces along the shared Automa victory point track based on its position on the privilege track, similar to how you would for a human player. If you're in the fourth and final council phase, that's it for step two. If not, then go through the three cards you drew for each of the Automa, left to right, until the icon on the bottom right hand corner of the card corresponds with the reward on the council reward board. If your match is for a grande worker upgrade, take a grande worker that's not in use in the game and place it on the Automa's worker box next to the worker indicating the Automa's color. Flip the card as usual to indicate that it's no longer available. That Automa will now ignore that reward going forward, acting as if it weren't a match. If no rewards on the Automa cards match the rewards on the Council Reward mat, the Automa gains one victory point instead of taking a Council Reward. If you're on the fourth and final Council Reward phase, the Automa are going to ignore the Council Reward cards and try and play Spoiler. If you don't have the Legendary Achievement victory point and that reward card is on offer from the Council Reward mat, the Automa is going to take it. Otherwise, among the remaining council rewards, the Automa is going to take the reward corresponding to the track on which you're the furthest from the end. This includes Glory if you use the advanced variant. Oh, and if two or more tracks tie for this, the Automa is going to take the one that is the topmost on your player mat. 
Automa doesn't gain benefits from the council phase, they just remove rewards for the sake of potentially taking rewards that you may want. Step 3, check max is easy. The Automa doesn't use province cards, so they don't have to make sure they have too many. Step 4, round setup is just shuffling the Automa deck and placing them face down with room for a discard pile. Finally, during step 5, place and move. If you remove workers during phase 5, you'll trigger Automa cards as usual, but you'll only use the worker placement piece of the card. No timers flip and no province cards are removed during the council phase. Finally, let's talk about the game end. Remember, the Automa is always considered to have the legendary achievements, so they're always in the game, right up to the end. If you don't have the legendary achievement, it's game over for you. If you and at least one of the Automa have both made it to the parchment area, you on all four tracks, you figure out who won by comparing the number of spaces into the parchment area across all four tracks you are against how many spaces into the parchment area the Automa is. If you're using the advanced variant, remember that each green space on the Automa scoring map corresponds to a glory cube. If neither you or the Automa have reached the parchment area, you compare your distance from the parchment area on your worst track with that of the Automa. The distance for the Automa is determined by the negative number in front of it on the scoring track. The rulebook does mention a variant titled Foreshadowing that has you drawing cards to the Automa mat each time you flip the purple timer as a means to keep track of what the Automa is going to end up with at round's end. But I'll let you take a look at that and decide if you want to add the additional, albeit minimal, overhead to your solo workflow. And that is the solo mode for Pendulum. If you have any questions, go ahead and drop them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Or if I can't answer them, I'll at least try and petition someone from Automa Factory to come take a look. They have probably already addressed that question a million times everywhere else. Uh, if so, I guess maybe I'll have that answer for you. Um, in any case, that's all I have for you today. Take care of yourselves and each other. Thanks for watching. Bye.